because they go there to stay warm and some of them will start to react. Yes. I think you have a different outlook on animals when you grow up. Don't you? I think so. Yeah. Oh. I mean, because that's the thing. Like, yeah. I mean, my, um, well, Sherry's still named all her cows. Really? But I don't think she, when she figured out that she was eating one of her messy things. Everybody falls sometimes Gotta find the strength to rise From the ashes And make a new beginning Anyone can feel the ache You think it's more than you can take But you are stronger Stronger than you know don't give up now, the sun will soon be shining. You gotta face the clouds to find the silver lining. I've seen dreams that move the mountains, hope that doesn't ever end, even when the sky is falling. I've seen Miracles just happen Silent prayers get answered Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do Doesn't matter what you've heard Impossible is not a word it's just a reason for someone not to try Everybody's scared to death When they decide to take that step Out on the water And it'll be alright Life is so much more than what your eyes are seeing you will find your way if you keep believing i've seen dreams that move the mountains hope that doesn't ever end even when the sky is falling i've seen miracles just happen silent prayers get answered Broken hearts become brand new That's what faith can do Overcome the odds You don't have a chance When the world says you can't It'll tell you that you can I've seen dreams that move mountains hope that doesn't ever end even when the sky is falling I've seen miracles just happen silent prayers get answered broken hearts become brand new that's what faith can do 
That's what faith can do. Even if you fall sometimes, you will have the strength to rise. Good morning. Oh, hold on. Jenny's getting stuff going. Oh, I'm not on camera yet for the live stream. Are we good? Okay, let's try it again. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Transfiguration Sunday. If you can't see, usually as a pastor, all you can see are my shoes. I have Transfiguration shoes on today. It's all about the little details. Today is the day where Jesus appears on a mountaintop to a couple of his favorite people, and he transfigures into something that is bright and white and sparkling. Um, and so when I saw these shoes, of course, a pastor thinks, Transfiguration Sunday shoes. <laughs> my goal is to get all shoes in all the liturgical colors. That's my goal. So uh, today is perfect. I have no idea when I'd wear these again, but I'm wearing them loud and proud today. So happy Transfiguration Sunday. <coughs> This is also the Sunday that, like, um, kind of passes us over into Lent, which starts on Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is already here, this coming Wednesday. Um, so we want to invite you to come on Wednesday to get those ashes on your forehead. We have a noon service, and we have a 7 o'clock service. And so we invite you to come on Wednesday, either at noon or at 7. And then uh, going forward, the following Wednesdays, we will have services at 6.30. Um, we will be doing Hold an Evening Prayer, which is always a favorite. If you have no idea what that is, that means you have to come and experience it because it's wonderful. Um, we will be having dinners uh, before the services during Lent. So, And we have different ministry groups hosting, and we have a very delicious menu. If you saw in the markings... Um, it's a delicious menu. So if you don't want to cook on a Wednesday, come and have dinner at 5.30, and then we will worship together at 5.45, and then we will worship together at 6.30. Also speaking of Lent, <clears throat> we are going to be doing a book study. We are going to be doing a book study um, about prayer and kind of contemplative practices and how we can engage with our relationship with God in new ways that kind of helps us to slow down, because that's, that's kind of what Lent is about, is to kind of take the time to slow down and kind of explore our relationship with God and see where we're at. And um, this book that was recommended to us by our spiritual leader for our contemplative practices group um, is really excited about this book. And so um, we have books on the table that are for your taking. We This contemplative practices um, initiative that we're doing for the next two years is funded and so we have these funds to be able to allow our congregation to join us in that and learn more about these contemplative practices. So we are going to be having a book study where we um, talk about two chapters a week and the schedule is printed here in your announcement sheet but it's also printed in um, an insert in the book. So whether you there's extras on the table of the schedule, yes. If you want it, because if you want to buy the Audible book or for your Kindle or that sort of thing, but we have physical books available as well. So we are going to be meeting either in person um, or on Mondays, in person on Sundays during our education hour or on Mondays via Zoom. And you can pick and choose depending on what your week looks like. If you want to come in person or in Zoom, you can do either or or both, if you're just that enthusiastic to talk about the book. No judgment. Um, so just know that that is one of the things that we are going to be doing together as a congregation, and so we really hope that you can participate in that conversation as well. Um, <clears throat> Mardi Gras bake sale is today. If you saw, there is a very long table with um, a bountiful amount of treats for you to purchase, and all of the proceeds are going to our sister church in Tanzania, and so if you want to support that ministry, peruse the table and see. I know I haven't been able to peruse it yet, so I can't even tell you what's on there. Can anybody tell me what's on the table? I know there's rosettes, brownies probably, cookies, anything else that needs to be mentioned that sounds... What? 
Oh, there's king cakes because of Mardi Gras. That's right. Absolutely. What? Key lime pie? Wow, we don't mess around with bake sales, do we? No, we do not. We do not. So make sure to peruse that table after worship um, in order to help that ministry. Also on the table where there's the books, um, we have our markings, um, our newsletter that comes out quarterly. So make sure to pick one of those up if you didn't, if you wanted a physical copy. We also made magnet, magnets again um, to kind of let you know what's going on in the spring. Kind of gives you the schedule of Lent and Easter and other things that are happening. So make sure you take a magnet home and stick it on your fridge so you can check that every week to be like, what's going on? I need to know times and dates. The magnet will help you do that. So the other thing that um, we wanted to mention to you is that um, we know that the CDC has changed its protocol to make masks recommended and not required. Um, so people have been asking me, well, can't we just do that? Me personally, I absolutely would love to, but it's not up to me. We have a COVID team in place that kind of helps make those recommendations. So our COVID team will be meeting um, ASAP to talk about that and make the recommendation to follow the CDC protocol, which will then get sent to council, and then council can make the final decision. And then we will send an email out ASAP um, to let you know that we will move into that COVID next step. So thank you for continuing to follow the mask protocol that we have right now, but just know it's on our radar and we are eager as well to move in this direction. It's just not something I can do on my own. So thank you for our, your patience with that and know that we are working on it vigilantly. Vigil, vigil, I can't say it. Vigilantly, thank you. Um, you also notice that there's some stuffed animals and blankets around you. We are gonna be talking about those during our children's sermon today. So I'm gonna let that just be a teaser um, for right now, but just know during our children's sermon we will be doing and talking about those as well. Um, those are all the announcements that I have. Thank you to our band for being here today to lead us in worship. It is wonderful to have you here. We also just say thanks to all those who help prepare for communion and serve and usher and greet. Um, thank you. Fellowship is happening after church and there are delicious cinnamon rolls for sale, fresh cinnamon rolls for sale, so you can uh, have some coffee and a cinnamon roll as well. So. And those proceeds also go to Tanzania. All right. I am going to invite you to stand as you are able as we begin our service with a call to worship. <clears throat> we, we come, those who seek to trust in God. We commit ourselves to do as Jesus would do for those around us. We come delighting in all the wonders God provides for us. We would not worry, but open ourselves to God's heart. We come waiting patiently for God to speak. We will be still listening for God's words of hope and peace. Let us sing our opening hymn in our blue hymnal, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Jesus shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow river flow, flood the nations with love and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. The light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Let us free to the truth you may bring us. Shine on us. Shine on us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Send forth your 
we gaze on your kingly brightness, though our faces repay your likeness, never changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on us. Shine on us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Praise, Spirit, praise. Set our hearts on fire. For river flow, flood the nations with love and The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Radiant Lord, you shine with power and truth. Your mercy reflects your compassion, your care, and your love. Transform us in your image as we seek to follow you. Use us to make your presence known throughout the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And I would like to invite any kids to come up, but I would also like to invite some special guests to come up with us um, as well. Come on down. Hello, Miss Eloise. Look at you. You can sit up all by yourself. Oh, my goodness, girl. Here, do you want to hold on to the elephant? Look it. You can hold on to this. Do you guys want to come pick your favorite to hold on to? Look, she's like distracted by the people. Okay. Like I said earlier in our service, we have some special guests with us to t um, here to help us um, bless these quilts and these stuffed animals that our quilters have made. Um, these quilts and um, stuffed animals are being made to go to our local fire station to put in the cars and trucks um, so that when they have to address a call and there is a fire or there is damage or there is sadness or trauma that happens and there are kids that this happens to, they can have these blankets and stuffed animals to give to these kids to offer comfort and know that we are caring for them through these items. And so, we think it is super important to care for all those in our life, right? Jesus calls us to love one another and to make sure that we show up in ways to help others when we can. When you have something bad or something hard that you go through in life, like maybe you get sick, right? You want to be comforted by something, right? Do you guys have a blanket or something or a stuffed animal that, that you sleep with or anything? I had a pacifier when I was little. And I loved it till I was five. <laughs> I was in the orthodontist for many years. Um, but I loved it because it brought me comfort and it made me feel safe, right? And sometimes we need to have that in our life when we go through something sad or hard. And Jesus is always with us. Whether we have something really awesome in our life that happens to us, we can celebrate and thank God for that. But also there are times in our life where things are really sad and hard. And so we want to make sure that we can be with kids and families that when something hard happens to them, we can help them by offering up a blanket or a stuffed animal for them to be comforted by. So, Ginny, do you want to say anything that I have maybe missed and maybe introduce our two guests? Is these guys are both on duty, so if they take off, it's not because you've said something wrong. Okay, I appreciate that. In case they leave during my sermon, I know I didn't say something. Well, I didn't want you to feel bad. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> I am proud today to introduce Battalion Chief Darren Ecker, who is from the Centennial Fire Department. And I... And I can honestly say now, I can say this because I was so bored to secrecy, I couldn't tell a soul, and I was told if I did, I'd be in trouble. 
You are going to meet the intern chief from Spring Lake Park, Moundsview and Blaine, who has just taken over because their chief is retiring. And so Dan Recker is now the new chief from that department. And I think Dan has something to say to everybody. Thanks, Jenny. That's crazy. I think she knew before I did. In fact, I know she knew before I did. She knows everything in this community. So I had asked if we could come and uh, personally thank the congregation for everything they've done for us. I think day to day I get to work, Darren and myself get to work with the best of the best in the community. Um, we oftentimes, when we respond, we're responding to the worst day of someone's life, typically. And any time that we can show up and mitigate any kind of problem is a good day for us. One of the things that when we show up to some of these crash scenes or fires or things like that, where people are scared, kids are scared, people lost everything, oftentimes when we leave, you know, our firefighters are left saying, okay, we put the fire out, we helped them out of the car or whatever. Wish there was something else we could do for them because typically when they leave, they're crying, they're upset. And blankets and things like this is, is trivial as it may seem to be able to go up to somebody, gift them a blanket, talk to them, let them know everything's going to be okay. One of these stuffed animals makes a huge difference. Um, for our firefighters to be able to do something like that is huge. So for us, having community support like we have with this church and others, is mission critical for us. We have to have the support to accomplish the mission that we're out for. So um, on behalf of the Spring Lake Park Blaine Moundsview Fire Department and the Centennial Fire District, thank you for everything that you guys are doing for us. I got to see where all the magic happens. Ginny brought us into the quilting room. For those that, are <laughs> that make these quilts, they're awesome. Um, we've got some great pictures that we're gonna share of uh, these being gifted to you know, people in accidents and things like that. So um, you're making a difference. You're making a difference in the community. You're making a difference for our firefighters because, uh, again, it makes them feel pretty good. So, Ginny, thank you. Thank you all. And uh, yeah, so the blankets are on all of our trucks. Every one of our frontline trucks and all of our chief squads, we've got blankets in them. So, again, these things are getting deployed quickly and often. So. Um, one of the first things we do once we get done doing patient care is pulling these blankets out. Children or adults, I mean everybody loves them so there's actually some pretty cool ones too with some great uh, themes on them so yeah it's fun so thank you thank you for the support and if there's anything that we can do let us know. Darren's always got the coffee on over at Centennial Station so stop in seriously anytime anytime so now that Ginny calls me her friend, I don't have to run and hide anymore when she pulls up. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for allowing us the time. Absolutely. So, if you have a quilt near you um, and you want to just lay your hand on it, if you guys want to take one of these stuffed animals and just hold that. Um, yeah, if you want to go sit and put your hands on a quilt or take a stuffed animal with you, you can. Absolutely. Um, we're just going to say a quick prayer for these blankets and these stuffed animals. So let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the many quilters who have put the time and effort to make these quilts and stuffed animals for those that are need. We give thanks to those firefighters who um, will be handing these out to those who are in need of comfort and peace and love. So surround them as they deliver them. But Lord, we also give great thanks for those who will receive these blankets and stuffed animals. May it bring them love and support and peace and comfort, knowing that they are being prayed for um, and cared for by members of this community. So be with all those that are dealing and facing trauma and know that you are with them always um, and you will continue to show up in our lives in ways that we can live out your mission to love one another. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good job, you guys. Thank you so much for coming up and helping me bless these stuffed animals and blankets, okay? You guys can head back to your seats, and we're going to have some special music.
Our first reading today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 through chapter 4, verse 2. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened, Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that the same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, 
we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 99, and we'll re read it responsively. This side, we'll read the regular print, and the pulpit side, we'll read the bold print. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord great in Zion is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests and Samuel among those who call upon your name. O Lord, they call upon you and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. O Lord, our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of our gospel for this morning. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, on this Transfiguration Sunday, as we pivot into a new liturgical season, we are called to focus on the need for transformation, or change, or metamorphosis, or plug in whatever word that makes you feel most comfortable. Now, we may not always like this change or transformation that may take place but we know that change is inevitable and it needs to happen. Like how a caterpillar changes into a? Very good. Like how the seasons need to turn from winter to spring to summer to? Yes. Like the need for humans to grow in order to reach all the stages of life. Our gospel for today talks a lot about transformation, transfiguration, change. But not just the transfiguration of Jesus, where he becomes dazzling white, but also about how much Peter wrestled with this event that took place. Transfiguration matters, it seems. It's not just uh, a convenient event to mark the Sunday that bridges Epiphany, the season of light, into Lent, the season of wondering and drawing us closer 
to Easter. We need transfiguration every day in our lives. We need it as much as Jesus needed to be transfigured. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on this mountain, and there he is changed. He is transfigured, and he is dramatically altered, in a sense, before their eyes. Change at its core insists that change uh, is difficult and something that we need to wrestle with. Some people are really good at change. They thrive on it. They seek it. Where others like to settle in and be comfortable where they are at. But change that demands reorientation and sometimes happens before we know what that change is going to lead us to or to the place where it takes us. And I suspect Peter is caught in that suspension between wanting things to stay the same and knowing that change is right about to happen. And I feel many of us try to do what Peter does in this in-between experience. We build tents. Now, tents are not permanent structures, right? But they're structures just the same. To give us more time to hold on to something we likely know can't be held on to for much longer. As soon as Peter experiences this spiritual high, he tries to hoard it and hang on to it. What I hear in his plan to make dwellings is an understandable but misguided attempt to contain or domesticate or protect and possess this sublime experience to harness the holy, to keep Jesus shiny and beautiful and safe up on that mountain. After all, everything is so good up on that mountain, right? It's clear, it's bright, it's unmistakably spiritual. So why not just stay there forever? Well, as Debbie Thomas writes in her commentary, because God is just as present just as active, just as engaged and glorious down at the bottom of the mountain, in the valley, in the visions, um, as God is in the visions of saints and clouds and shadows Peter experiences in those high places. God is very much still present in the valley. In fact, what Peter eventually learns is that the compassionate heart of God is most powerfully revealed amidst the broken and the sinful, and the suffering, and the despairing. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Debbie Thomas goes on to say that God's beauty is best contained in broken vessels. We might not like this aspect of faith because it's hard and it is messy, but it's the aspect that has much to teach us. In those times, whether we are up on the mountain or down in the valley or in between, it is not that we don't see the change coming. It's not that we haven't recognized what the change might look like in that transition down or up. We just wonder if we're ready for it, if we can handle it if we're prepared enough for it. So we make these temporary structures as an act of entrenchment, but also to capture a memory to cope with what is to come. And I think that's Peter's reasoning. It's not so much about holding Jesus and his expectations, nor is it capturing the moment. I think Peter's issue is the realization that if Jesus changes then Peter is going to be changed as well. Well, I can't, I can't be the same. I'm also going to be transfigured by this. I'm going to be transformed, and, well, maybe I don't want that because what if I change for the worse? I, and I don't know what that could be. So I have an idea. Let's just pitch some tents, and we'll keep things exactly the way they are. Moses can come, and Elijah can come, and we can all hunker down, and we can ride it out, and it'll be wonderful. And maybe other things will just pass us by, 
and then I can come out of my tent and everything will just be the same. Not quite, right? Good, good thinking, Peter, but not quite. Change insists that we exist in a place that maybe we don't want to be, and that's okay. Change demands that we abide in a space of yet to be a resolution. Change creates a sense of grief over what was, but also excitement for what is to come. So between these valleys and mountaintops, where we know that God remains in both, may we take baby steps and maybe have a transfiguration moment. That moment when we know that change has to happen, but maybe we're not quite ready for it. That moment when we have a hundred million reasons to walk away, but we just need one good reason to stay. Or that moment when we are desperate to hold on, and yet we know we have to let go. That is transfiguration. So I ask, can we hold the mountain and the valley as one, denying neither or embracing both? Can we do this hard work out of love and compassion for each other so that no one among us is left out to hurt and to suffer in the places where God's presence is harder to discern? I still yearn for mountaintop experiences. I think we all do. And that's okay. They'll come and they'll go according to God's timing, not according to my micromanagement. In that sense, sublime spiritual experiences are easy. They require little from me. I can't control them. What's hard is consenting to follow Jesus back down the mountain. What's essential is finding Jesus on that road, knowing that valleys are places that we will go. There will be deep sorrow, and at the heart, and there will be unanswered prayer, and there will be frustration and sadness, but there will still be God. What's key in discerning the presence of God in the spaces up high or down low or in the spaces in between light and shadow is this transfiguration moment, baby steps. Almost thinking about monkey bars. Everyone's played on the monkey bars. Where you're swinging and you're hanging on, but in order to get to the next bar, you have to let go of this one, right? in order to swing and grab the next one. But you don't know if you're going to grab that next one or not, or if you'll fall. But in order to get across, you have to let go. With Transfiguration Sunday, we come to an end of another liturgical season of Epiphany, the season of light. Having seen the brightness of Epiphany, we now prepare for this holy darkness of Lent. We can't know ahead of time what that will look like for us. We can't know ahead of time what mountains and valleys are going to lie ahead. We can't predict how God will speak loud or quiet and in what guise Jesus might appear. But we can trust in this whether we are on the brightest mountain or in the darkest valley, Jesus abides. Even as he blazes with holy light, his hand remains warm and solid on our shoulders. Even when everything else that we are counting on disappears, Jesus remains. Don't be afraid to come down the mountain. Keep looking and listening for the sacred, no matter where the journey takes you. Because Jesus is present everywhere. 
because both the mountain and the valley belong to him. Amen. Together, let us now confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted view, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. Today, we especially pray for the family and friends of Verna Wood as they grieve her death. Elaine, Richard, Robin, Ruth, Yvonne, Susan, Sherry, Sue, Wendy, Sandy, and all that we name in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless who all prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray also for the health and well-being of our brothers and sisters in Tanzania. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take the time to safely share the peace with one another this day. Even though we still don't pass our plate around, we like to just take the time to um, acknowledge that our offering plate is in the back of the church for your weekly offering, but also give thanks for the gratitude of this uh, ministry of St. Mark and for the many ways in which we all give. So let us give thanks um, and praise uh, for those offerings this morning. You pour out grace upon us, loving God, not so we might be filled, but that we might empty ourselves for others. Take these gifts we offer in these moments and use them to bring new life and hope all around us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we now will continue with the great thanksgiving for communion. So the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Will you all please join me in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for amen you may be seated please know that your ushers are going to guide you forward um, to one of our two stations up front where you will receive a cup that has the wafer and juice in it we ask that you just remain masked until you make it back to your seat where you then can take the wafer and juice and then put the cup in the baskets that are provided in your row for those of you that are worshiping at home, may you take whatever elements you may have and hear the words, um, knowing that they are sufficient enough that the body and blood of Christ are given and shed for you. The table is ready and all are welcome.
I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine. When all I will do is forever, forever worship you, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still, will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? For in all of you be still. Will I stand in your presence? But to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. When all I will do is forever, forever worship you, I can only imagine. I invite you to stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace always. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace and your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we go into the benediction, I just have a couple things that I forgot to say. Um, one, the flowers up here are from Larry Ryle's service that happened yesterday. It was a beautiful service, but we just ask that you continue to pray for the family and friends of Larry Ryle as they continue to grieve his loss. Also, as you may have heard in the prayers um, this past weekend, one of our members, Verna Wood, passed away. It was very peaceful, um, and I was able to walk with the family in that moment. And uh, we ask that you continue to hold her family in your prayers her service is going to be this coming Friday at 2 o'clock here at St. Mark, if you wish to attend. But we will make sure to send out a constant contact um, email to the congregation with more information if there is any. Uh,
Verna was a very, very sweet lady, and um, she is. She was very excited to go home to see her husband, Dennis. And so, uh, we just ask, just continue to hold that family in your prayers. And then Anita wanted to come forward real quick. You have to be Matt or uh, Miked, though. Because I'm so shy. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, it's not on four. Hello. There we go. I'm so shy. That's why they made mm-hmm. me come up here. So shy. Now, you know, you heard we're going into Lent, and we have to, you know, give up things and all that old-fashioned stuff. Well, today is your day to stock up on goodies. We have an abundance of, of baked goods right here outside the door. And then have you been smelling something good mm-hmm. and the oh yeah you baked yeah. them right now mm-hmm. it baked right here right here in the loving arms of saint mark so uh, proceed up to the fellowship hall <clears throat> i believe there's coffee i hope if there uh, isn't we're not <clears throat> a church i don't know what that yeah. is yeah otherwise there are cinnamon rolls and there are orange blossom rolls my goodness fresh out of the oven <laughs> and i didn't bake them <laughs> We look forward to being in fellowship with you following worship. So let us be sent out with this blessing. Led by the Spirit, go forth in God's love. Illumined by the Spirit, shine with Christ's light. Amen. Let's sing our sending hymn, Arise, Your Light Has Come. Share and shine in the good news. Going down to the river to feed my weary soul, to find my loving Savior. In the water so dark and so cold I will roll down the road To fill up my wandering soul I will ride into the wind I'll make my way home again Going out to the country to see the among those stars To find my loving Savior In the darkness of the sky I we roll on down the road To fill up my wandering soul And I we ride into the wind I'll make my way home again Going out to the mountains To reach that glory land To find my loving Savior In the palm of my own hand And I will roll 
to fill up my water and soul And I went right into the wind I'll make my way home again Yes, I will roll on down the road To fill up my wonder and soul And I will ride into the wind I'll make my way, make my way I'm gonna make my way home again Oh, you betcha.